Young Blood. I've been meaning to have a word with you. What is it about, Commander? Well, you see, it's about your future with Cobra. The thing about mercenaries, Blood, they're never in short supply. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello! Hey, hey guys, we were just... We were just dusting. <laughs> Looks good. My name is Steven. I'm Robert. That's and we me. are G.I. Joburg, and we are doing something slightly different this time around. Um, instead of playing with our toys in front of a camera, we're actually going to be reviewing them. It's Cobra Convergence. And the theme for this year's Cobra Convergence is Cobra Blue. Cobra Blue. So we have taken it upon ourselves to review every single blue cobra in G.I. Joburg's arsenal. Absolutely, it's going to be amazing because there's not just one Cobra Blue, guys. There's, there's several different ones. So we're going to rate them uh, and hopefully... I don't know, it just has some interesting things to say. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we don't often feature Cobra, so it's always a pleasure to come on Cobra Convergence Month and just talk Cobra. Totally, totally. We're going to do things chronologically, working our way back from the 90s, back into the, the heyday of the 80s, and see which figures and vehicles rise to the top of the pile when it comes to Cobra Blue. And kicking things off, it's very fitting that we start with Cobra Commander. This is Talking Battle Commanders, Cobra Command from 1992. Get a good eye full of that. Looking regal in his Cobra Blue, nice battle dress uniform, and yellow accents as opposed to gold. Just pretty smart. Gold yeah. paints tended to rub off very easily. Very, very easily. Mm. And blue seems to be one of the best colors, actually, no matter what shade the blue is, because it tends to last a lot longer, I find. Yeah. Nothing says Cobra like blue. So this is a slightly brighter blue than uh, the traditional, like, dark Cobra blue. Yes. What do you think of that, Rob? I think it's appropriate for the time period. I mean, the 90s were very bright in general. He had, <laughs> to, he had to stand out. But it's definitely Cobra Commander. And quite a nice skull he's got going on behind those eyes. Any comments on the included accessories? I'm glad it's Backpack. removable. <laughs> yeah. Though it Although. does leave him with this rather unique back. Yeah, you're only ever going to photograph the Cobra Commander from the front, please. Yeah, don't ever do it from the back. It's nice. He's jackbooted. I don't know if you liked the traditional Cobra Commander with his kind of... I don't know, what were they? His pantaloons. <laughs> yeah, kind of. They looked a bit weird. But I mean, this looks like he's more ready for battle. It's kind of like a mix. It's like he can wear the hood in battle. Mm. If you wanted to. Yeah. No, absolutely. That does kind of straddle both, fortunately. You know, it's a battle-ready hooded Cobra Commander, which is perhaps the best of both. You've got the cult leader-looking uh, visage, but the battle-ready uh, physique and boots. And that stripe is just pure class. It's fantastic. Mm, nice and thick. It's not going to rub off too easily. Let's move on, shall we? From Cobra Commander to Cobra Commander. What? How did that happen? Oh wait, we've got to rate him first. Oh, the rating. Whish. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. What do you think, Rob? So this blue, this is quite a bright blue, you know, compared to a lot of the other blues that we have going on here. Uh, it stands out. I mean, I imagine on a shelf this would look really good. I think I'm probably going to give this 6 out of 10. 6 mm. out of 10 for, for visibility. And like, you will definitely see him on the battlefield. Oh, I think that head sculpt alone is worth a seven from me. Whoa. Yeah. No, it's good, man. Those eyes have an intensity that's... You know it's Cobra Commander. You know he's the bad dude. You know he's kind of the man pulling all the strings. Yeah. Other Cobra Commanders fall short in terms of the face sculpt. This is intense. And it's, it's worth a, a higher mark from me. I'm gonna give him seven. I do also like the rifle. Or laser gun, whatever it is. He came with a missile launcher, which I think is a little bit out of place. But... Yeah, that's not... With that. No. <laughs> As a kid, you kid. So that's a seven and a half out of ten from from the boys at GI Joe book. Absolutely. Let's move on to another version of Cobra Commander from a couple years before that. Mm-hmm. It's a childhood Cobra Commander of mine, 1991. Uh, as you can see, the gold paint is all but gone. He's got this mutant uh, <laughs> flesh tone <laughs> head. <laughs> 
But uh, it's a fresh take on the Cobra Commander uniform. What do you think, Rob? It's a very unique take. I mean, just moving from the from the head. I mean, that kind of like smudgy, just kind of like face shield he's got going on there. It's very different from any other version. I suppose it's like it's similar to the the helmeted version, but. Yeah, I, I like this version. He also kind of feels almost like he could be a pilot, which I mean, I suppose is appropriate because he comes with a glider that he fires off at his enemy. <laughs> mm hmm. It's not bad. I mean, I, I, I kind of snubbed this toy as a child because it is very unique. It's very much its own thing. It doesn't fit in with the other kind of spring loaded launcher weapons of the era, which are best ignored. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's it's got some tonk to it, definitely. Oh, let's see if I can get it, get this right on camera. Oh man, nope. I've already fluffed it. Not gonna happen. Oh. Hey. <laughs> well, well, it's geez. definitely a childhood toy. Oh no, where did it go? Where did it go? So you want to rate him, Robbie? While I try and get this right. Well, this version of Cobra Commander is also really fantastic. It's just unfortunate, yeah, gold. But I mean, how do you know that? You know, twenty plus years later, that the gold's gonna go away. Um. Yeah, I like this version. He's, he's less bright. Um, he's interesting and unique. I'd probably give him a yeah, I'd give him a seven out of ten. I really enjoy him. I like him a lot. There he is. There he is. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, guys. I was just you know kind of like bring, really getting into the details there. Mm. Yeah, I give him a seven out of ten. I enjoy him a bit more than the other one. Idiot. Other than the unfortunate um, golds, you know, coming off. But what do you do? That's what it is. We'll get Paul to you know repaint him. <laughs> 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 um, I, I'm gonna say it's 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 tough to, to beat the original Cobra Commander look. This one perhaps isn't his most celebrated look, but it does have that Cobra Blue, and that's got to count for something. I'm gonna rank him underneath the other Cobra Commander, give him a solid six. Whew. Moving on to uh, Cobra's premier mercenary scumbag. It's Major Blood. It's Major Blood with a very interesting update. Whew. He's covered in grenades. Hey man, at least he's blue. That's true. For a mercenary, he's finally showing some allegiance to Cobra. He's never rocked the Cobra symbol, at least not as far as I can recall. But this version does doll him up in Cobra's primary color. And uh, he's looking very aggressive, as you say. The grenades, I mean, he's ready for aerial bombardment thanks to this oversized jetpack. Yeah, another victim of the time, unfortunately. It had to have sound features, which have completely failed us now, but they used to go pew 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 something like that, you know. It sounds about right that I can remember. And you're definitely not gonna miss that rifle. That is very bright. It's it's a very unique design. There's a kind of symmetry that works out quite nicely between these guys as a result. Yeah, they look like they work together. Yeah. Though Blood does rock a deeper blue. I kind of almost wish the Cobra Commander had that. I mean, they're more or less the same era, but Blood got the more royal tone. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's nice. And I must say the yellow straps don't uh, annoy me because, you know, they are geared for his his jetpack. It's kind of like high visibility, you know, hazard gear. Yeah, no, I think so. That's how I'm going to explain that. <laughs> it uh, works with the figure. I came think. with a curious additional weapon, which can only be described, I suppose, as a sonic weapon of some kind. That's what I always thought it was, and but I... An annoyingly easily lost part. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Hasbro. <laughs> I don't think I ever played with that. No, I think I used it once. The sonic weapon was used to, like, induce nausea in enemies, <laughs> making them unfit to fight. And then Blood would swoop in and drop some grenades on them while they were heaving their guts out. Well, that's, that's a smarter use than uh, in, in an episode of the anime series we watched last night. Oh, yeah? What was that? That was a... Uh... Oh, what was it called? It was set in a, in a country. Oh, they used like a shockwave emitter yes. to, to shake Sky like Strikers a... yes. to, to pieces. The effects are really good, but like, just the... Yeah. Major Blood. Well done. What does he get? Wonder. Wow, I really enjoy this this version of, of Major Blood. Like, he feels unique, but he also feels like he's part of the forces of Cobra. I'd probably give him a 8 out of 10. I really like this figure. Great head sculpt. You can't knock that. I mean, certainly, like, does away with the rather potato <laughs> head um, proportions of the original. Yeah, no, this is a good blood. The, the grenades didn't deter me as a child. Yeah. They shouldn't deter me now. Absolutely not. You should definitely enjoy him for those grenades. And you explained it quite well. I never actually thought about it like that, that he actually uses, he drops them. 
Mm-hmm. I'm going to give him a seven. Nice. He's up there with the commander now. <sighs> next up. What's next? Interrogator. Once again, rocking the very regal Cobra Blue. This guy is a very special figure. I'm sure we can all appreciate that. With his Vader slash uh, Boba Fett-esque helmet. Yeah, he's a very unique looking figure. And also we've uh, featured his art in some of our art, art battles as well. We, uh, we quite like this guy. <laughs> Does he get any bonus points for the included battle copter? Uh, I would probably take points away. <laughs> <laughs> I've had fun with the copters in the past, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, Hooded Cobra Commander is quick to point out that really it's a case of like this being an accessory to the figure. The figure yeah. is what you're really after, and he is he is beautiful. I think I'm going to crack open an 8 out of 10 for this guy. Wow. Yeah. That was easy. Very. But he makes it easy. It's beautiful. I mean, the details are on point. This guy, he could work in an earlier era... But he's still got that kind of like 90s beefiness, which makes him a bit more battle ready. I don't know, these guys are more um, more carefree to play with, to be honest, than the, the old school guys. Well, you know, they were the battle core. <laughs> true, 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 true. Uh, yeah, as I say, d are on point. The uh, Cobra symbol, the red face plates, it's just gorgeous. They were still bringing it in the You need to rate it, dude. You, so you gave it a... An eight. A, whoa, I'm going gi- to give him a seven. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, it's a high, I, I like high it. Rating. Well, I mean, you know, he doesn't. He's not all blue, mm. but he's he's probably the figure I think with the least blue out of everything that we have going on here. Mm. Um, but still, that is a good, that is a good Cobra blue. At least the like the classic Cobra blue that I think we all used to. Mm. Stunning. All right. <laughs> he's gone. He's very different from uh, from our next thing here. Wow. Here we go. Our first vehicle, <laughs> and it's a doozy. Hey, <laughs> it's the Hurricane Beetle. <sighs> From 1990. Mm, Look mm, at that. Mm. And also very unique. We've, we've done a review of this before. Um, very well featured, I think. It's brilliant. It's absolutely gorgeous. Does it get points deducted for being in that lighter shade? I suppose it should. I mean, it's it's close. It's close enough to kind of like later era blues, but it's very much its own thing. And Cobra has so few jets that. They never kind of gave, you know, like a unique and like unifying color across their entire air force. But like, I, I just love this thing. Yeah, it's it's hard to knock it, particularly because it fulfills it's got a niche. So much stuff going on. It fulfills it. a niche that no other Cobra fighter has. Yeah, we have point. a bomber, we have a helicopter, this we is have a dedicated interceptor craft. It's fantastic, and its pilot is. Ooh is Vapor, also Vaporous. very unique looking guy, beautiful embossed Cobra logo on his chest, sculpted in there, Ooh, nice. Yeah, we, we, we've talked 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 quite a bit about this guy and the vehicle. Um, I think probably, yeah, the blue is a bit less like the kind of blue that I'm used to, especially if you consider the most other blues are more kind of like darker and less... It's not bright, but it's very light. Hmm. I'd probably give this a four out of ten. What? Yeah, I'm I'm going quite low with this. I love the vehicle, but the color could have been more Cobra Blue. Oh, you are you are cruel. I am. This cruel. is a solid seven from me. Wow. No, oh, no, I I just love I love pretty much everything about this. It's hard to knock, and as I say, it really does fulfill a niche that very no, few I other Cobra vehicles vehicle. had. Yeah, I know. I love the vehicle. Just the blue doesn't. To me, it doesn't feel Cobra enough. It doesn't feel like classic Cobra blue. Well, you're definitely going to moderate my score with your four. Oh, it's lowering. It's lowering that guy's position. Also from 1990, a solid troop builder from that year. Cobra Wilderness Trooper, Range Viper. And his tube. <laughs> a very forgettable accessory, this, so I'm gonna discard this for now and mainly just talk about. Whoa! Oh, discard everything just, for now! Just get rid of all of it! This is a childhood figure. range viper, so he's got nicely stretched out thumbs. They fortunately have not been cracked, but they accommodate everything perhaps a little bit too easily. But, uh. Uh, yeah, man. The rotary barrel or rotary drum fed grenade launch is great. Uh, I love the fact that the grenades are repeated on the backpack. That's a nice synergy of design between accessories. Uh, and he comes with a knife to, you know, gut Cobra, f- um, 
gut G.I. Joe <laughs> fools. <laughs> well, maybe he's stabbing other Cobras in the back. These guys are pretty rogue. As far as Cobras are concerned, Filecard makes them out to be lone operatives. They're left out there with no support, no backup, just an objective and any and all means at their disposal to survive and complete the mission. So these guys get it done, whatever the cost. I like the fact that he has a bandolier of, of bullets, uh, also done in brass, that's much better than silver, um, though it does wear out, obviously, but just from a realism point of view, I like that. And that really detailed head sculpt is oh, absolutely incredible. What? It's the stuff of horror. <laughs> and it should be, Cobra should be intimidating. That's why the snow serpents have that cool, like, Jason Voorhees hockey mask yeah. thing going on. Yeah. It's the same thing repeated with all Range Viper. He has a pipe, which I neglected to include for this review, um, which would run from his head to his backpack. Presumably uh, a water uh, Yeah, I feed. reckon so, yeah. To kind of keep him hydrated as he goes along. Or oxygen, I suppose, if he's going into gassed out areas. But like, being a wilderness trooper, I think water is your primary concern. Um, I love this figure. I'll make no bones about it. He's on my top 10 favorite of all time. So I've got to give him a 9. Wow. It's definitely a beautiful figure. Um, but like the blue, this is probably the least blue. I think this is more going into like green blue. It's it's faded. It's sun damaged. This is my child. Sure, the sure it is. Sure it is. Sure it is. <laughs> um, I've always I've always admired this figure. Like this, the face sculpt is so unique and different. Um, and I just love like the ridges on his. It's like a brain. It's so gross. It's fantastic. Mm. I think I would probably give this an eight out of ten. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think so. The man to beat. Absolutely. I mean, this guy, you have to beat him. I mean, this, yeah, he's fantastic. Mm. He's Alrighty. Winner. He's a winner. Shush. Now we're going to jump from the 90s back into pretty much the golden era of things with another vehicle. Mm. The Cobra Hydro Slave. My goodness. I mean, the predominant color is blue, so I think it gets a pass. The maroon ties it in nicely with the moray. And it's, it's a block. It is definitely a block. Um, you can fit two figures on there. That's that's better than having just one. And it, they don't look like they're not supposed to be side by side on the vehicle. Instead of you know putting like figures on the um, the struts of the dragonfly. The torpedoes are nice. I mean, they don't look very torpedo esque. Yeah, those are missiles. <laughs> but uh, but they look aggressive enough. I mean, it looks almost like they're meant to punch holes in in ship hulls as opposed to outright blow them up. Yeah. And also, the blue now is the blue that they seem to have used throughout the entire 80s. Um, this is, I think, the, the most well-known blue of Cobra. Yep. This kind of very dark blue. Lovely. And they were very consistent, I think, across, across the vehicles and several of the figures to kind of match the blue quite, yeah, consistently. Yeah. Lovely control panel work there. That is a repro label, I'll have you know. It looks very, very jazzy. In fact, these are also repro labels and they look very fresh, very minty, lovely. Um, not all of them are repro labels though. <laughs> uh, oh, these are also new. Uh, shout out to Toy Hacks, those guys do a damn fine job. Um, this is still a block, but it gets points from me because I've made sense of this as more of a, a James Bond Thunderball type. Yeah, um, it's a delivery underwater, system. Well, yeah. I've, I've given it a kind of an underwater dimension, and I think that helps make sense of this thing. Yeah. Because it is a diver deployment vehicle. It's a torpedo ship, basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. An insertion vehicle. It's a covert ops vehicle, and, and in that light, this thing really shines. Uh, but it's still a block. It's and a block. It's, it's fun to a point. It, it doesn't have too much design panache going for it. So it's gonna get a solid five right in the middle for me. I'm yeah, I'm probably also gonna go with the five. I mean, so this does better than the uh, the hurricane for you. I think it does. Oof. At least at least in in the context of the blueness, like like we're all about the blue today, and I think this kind of gives more blue of Cobra. Like it feels more like a Cobra vehicle than the hurricane to me. I mean, I'm, I love the hurricane, but like it doesn't feel as Cobra as this does. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's uh, deep dive. We're still in 86, and this one is a giant among men. Now, there's a proper army builder. Oh, yes. The Viper. Cobra finally decided to give their troops some body armor. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, he's he's a beauty, isn't he? He's fantastic. He's and rocking he's... the classic deep cobra blue. He's got red accents, which ties him into so much other cobra equipment. And the black, black and red are just uh, together. They are just so good. Yeah, it works fantastic. It's a look I that mean... just makes sense of all the colors, and it's a tight combat body. I mean, it's like it looks like it means business. He's good. He's good. I I I literally can't say anything bad about this guy. <laughs> The face shield ties it in with old battle helmets, Cobra Commander. Yeah. So he's out there fighting. Yeah, they look more appropriately Cobra than kind of like the older officers. I mean, those guys look more like they're, you know, on the behind, not behind the, the wall, but yeah. Mm, techies. Techies. Officers. Officers. Base yeah. personnel. Well, these guys are the guys on the front line. I'd say these guys are like Cobra. shock troops in the same sense that's like, you know, the US Marines, for instance. Yeah. These guys are like tip of the spear, man. They're fantastic. Yeah, accessories, while few in number, are absolutely perfect. And get a nice write-up in the file card. I've often poured over the details surrounding this gun. And yeah. it's it's a unique Cobra weapon. It's not like they pinched it from the Warsaw Pact. Mm. You know, it's not an AK-47, it is its own thing. And it's appropriate as well, it's not a sniper rifle. So you can actually <laughs> troop build and have this guy... Oh well, it's got a scope. swap out his weapons. I think, I think you can have a dedicated sniper on the team who like hangs back and just... You know, uses the standard Viper weapon. Maybe with some modifications, but like... It's all there, it's got a box fed, you know, ammo. Um, you could use it as a, as, a, as a squad automatic weapon. It's got the grenade launcher. Oh man, it's just, versatile. It's it goes perfect. all over the place. I'm giving this a nine out of ten. Oof. Yeah. As am I. Hey. Wow. <laughs> the troop to beat. Well, he's up there with Range Viper for me, but yeah, I, I'm pretty sure your nine is going to pull him into one of our top ranks. Top territory. Ah, we're now plunging into 1985 territory with another vehicle, Cobra Night Landing, a very subtle addition to Cobra's arsenal. Yes, and also probably the deepest blue that we have. I mean, sometimes at first glance this looks more black than blue. And it's it's something you need. I mean, especially in the earlier... I mean, they did keep it very realistic, and this is probably the most realistic vehicle in Cobra's arsenal. It's a vehicle and a play pattern in one, because it comes with, like, diorama pieces. Yes. You can't discount the fact that, like, they saw fit to include, you know, not only a ship ship-mounted weapon, but... This beautiful, beautiful gun, which I think is underrated, man. Is it the uh, the old German submachine gun? I think so. I remember playing with those in uh, Call of Duty back in the day. That's great. Very subtle for Cobra, eh? You'd almost expect Joe, Joe to use a Zodiac more. Yeah. But when paired with this thing's principal operator, it's you just perfection. can't go wrong, man. When they drew that art, they knew what they were doing. Oh. Top top contender for the arts accolades. What does it get out of ten, though? Ooh. Well, it's kind of <clears throat> it's a boat. <laughs> it's like the least Cobra thing I can think of, but it looks beautiful. I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. It's gorgeous. Yep, it is boats. Um, it does perhaps invite more imaginative play, um, but I don't think this would ever blow my hair back. Um, I can't give it more than a six. Wow. It's beautiful, it's perfect, but it is a Zodiac. Gosh darn it. <laughs> now these guys are more controversial in my opinion. Ooh. The Crimson Twins. Controversial, eh? I've never liked them. Wow, that is controversial. You, you didn't express that opinion in an unpopular opinion episode. Uh, maybe to come. Maybe it's forthcoming. Da, 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 da. These are my childhood twins. Uh, I had tell. them way, way back. Not <laughs> as back as their release, though. I get the feeling these guys were actually peg warmers. Because they started popping up in South African supermarkets as late as 1992. That's crazy. It's the two figures for the price of wine. Yeah, but I remember parents of friends of mine saying, why would they get this for their kids? You're basically paying... For two figures, 
that are precisely the same. They couldn't see the sort of the economic sense of buying this two-pack. They didn't read the back of the file card. It's all explained there. Look, buddy, as far as the layperson is concerned, you are getting two figures for the price of one. But they had a gimmick, a gimmick that I don't really care for. <laughs> you know, the whole, like, psionic link. Oh, yeah. my brother. Oh, you're hurting. Oh, ah, I'm hurting too! Ah. My thumb is broken, so you can't hold a weapon in your right hand. Yeah. <laughs> Childhood toys, indeed. <laughs> Apologies, everyone. Also, I only have certain of their accessories because I, I swapped... I, tra I think I traded a figure oh, with no. this gun, uh, you know, mismatched. Or a mask this toy. fantastic thing. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the zipline. Sky is... I zipline! That is my function. <laughs> well, but you can't knock these outfits, though. I mean, they're very cool. And it's nice how they kind of, like, swapped, you know, the arms and stuff. Hmm. And, and the blue is... This is this is a Cobra blue as well. I mean, yes, they're extensive enterprises and they're rocking their own thing. But, I mean, it is perhaps a bit of a lighter blue or, or kind of like a richer blue. Is it? Dark, I think so. Dark, dark. It feels like it is. Hmm. Maybe, maybe it's just the, the, the wearing of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, as I say, these are childhood toys and they've certainly seen their fair share of battles. Never as protagonists. So I think there was one era, I think after episode one came out, that I used one of these guys as a Jedi. Gave yes. Him, gave him a, co a, a co coat or maybe a, a cloak, a cape or something from a Batman action figure and a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> but so never nice. as themselves. What are you going to give them? I'm probably going to give these guys a 6 out of 10. Mm. I mean, they're very unique. They kind of feel like they are a Cobra as well. Um, and I, yeah, I like the fact that you could, in, at the time, get two figures for the price of one. <laughs> I mean, Whatever. that's fantastic. Look, this, <laughs> the sculpting panache cannot be denied. But, you know, I'm going to use my personal bias and say these guys were only ever worth a 5. Ooh, you can crucify me in the comments section for not liking the Crimson Twins. Maybe I've got to feature them in a webisode in order to find the love. But uh, for me, it's a five. Sorry, guys. Twins. Oh. Two for the price of one, but no. twice as bad. <laughs> they both feel the pain. Ooh, I think we're as far as 84 now. 84, definitely. Bam. 1984 brought us this beautiful piece. Mm. And it's regal Cobra Blue. That it's is rather fantastic. unique in the line. As a towed Cobra weapon. You know, it's, it's, it's a piece of world building which doesn't make for necessarily the most exciting toy in and of itself. But, I think the Asp had its place. Uh, what do you think, Rob? I think it's a gorgeous vehicle and it's nice, yes, that it's towable. It's got that kind of like little, little features and makes it fun. What tows it, by the way? Is it the... I suppose you could use... Oh, we're gonna have to defeat the purpose of this exercise and dip into the black <laughs> color scheme with uh, the Stinger Jeep. Well, now it makes sense why they decided, you know, to make that a Cobra vehicle. Mm -hmm. They needed something to pull this thing along. And you can up. also get your his stick to tow it, but his tank does have a, a tow hitch. Has a tow hitch, yeah. This is a transformer. I mean, it goes from towable weapon system to cannon emplacement. But it also raises up, which is curious. I, I, I can never understand why, but it then becomes problematic, unfortunately, for its own function because it can't turn and be raised. Also, there's another problem with this toy, and it's called seating. <laughs> it is not well tailored to accommodate a figure. That's the seating is way too shallow, and he just sticks out of the roll bar. Look at the cage. I mean, it's, it's not a good look. Um, and, and unfortunately, you can't get past that. Like, as gorgeous as it is as, as a dio piece or as a play pattern. I mean, I know Cujo from the podcast loves this thing for the sense that it, it is a lone soldier's story. You know, one cobra basically at a fixed position, the desperation of being in that situation. And like, I have to hold the line or I die. Yeah. You know? These things are always the first thing to be wiped out in a G.I. Joe air raid or, or ground strike. Well, you have to, to be yeah. able to continue your own you know, fight onwards. So, you know, pitting an asp against, like, a G.I. Joe dragonfly, it's high drama. At the end of the day, man, just... It's a spinning mm. gun. Okay, does, <laughs> does, I'm going to give it an extra point for its own design. That's beautiful. The sort of asp spitting fire. But it's it's a six, solid six for me. Yeah, I'd probably give it a six as well. I think um, 
There's it looks so, so good it. as gorgeous. an addition to your to your forces, but as your kind of primary toy, I don't know if I'd be over the moon receiving this on Christmas Day. Yeah, you'd have to get a vehicle that can pull it. Mm -hmm. You can't just have this. It's just like, oh, thanks. I have this thing that can't go anywhere. What are you giving it, Rob? I'm giving it a six as well, actually. Mm. I think a solid six. High five. Hey! <laughs> no five. <laughs> All right. We're getting down to the wire now. We're in the thick of things with 1984, and we're going to kick things off with Scrap Iron. Perfect marriage of Cobra Blue with that deep, deep crimson. That's where they got that idea for the Viper later on, I think. Totally. They're like, we did a good job that one time. <laughs> and he's a unique character which doesn't get much celebration, unfortunately. But I guess he he's kind of really just one of the boys. I mean, as a kind of a heavy weapons expert and weapons testing guy, you know, his scope for use is somewhat limited. But uh, he did have a video game appearance and several comic book appearances, both in uh, the United States uh, Marvel Comics and also... Battle Action Force. And he was a bit of a turncoat in the uh, Serpentor Rises <laughs> yes, cartoon as well. Yeah, he betrayed Cobra Commander. So yes, I mean, for a, a, a character that got relatively few figures, at least in the classic run, um, he did have some, some pivotal moments in history. What do you think of the design of the figure? I really enjoy this figure. I think he's amazing. I mean, he's got so much stuff on him. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the holster pistol here, I mean, he got the cool jacket that he's wearing. Um, Got a bunch of grenades. I mean, there's just so much detail on here, and even has a little cobra symbol. <laughs> Quite <laughs> very, very wiped cool. away. Accessories. Uh, we've got an accessory pack, one which serves him just as well as the original. Yeah. Um, dressing it in red rod. Well, blue. if you consider that, I mean, this figure was completely unexpected. Um, he was just a, a, a freebie included with the. Um, what was he included with the hydro sled? Uh, Hydra of Foil? Hydra I foil. don't know. Maybe it was, it was the Mumbers, I don't know. It was something, but like, he was just in the box. And it's so, you know, free figure. Nice. It always makes them... Ironically, happy. I've been given this figure as a freebie at least three times. <laughs> For some reason, Scrap Iron is like the figure that, you know, people are just happy to, to let slide. Yeah. Um, it's just weird. I think it's really cool. It's always a, case, a sad case when you need to look for flaws in a figure in order to have it not rise to the top because while this is a very good figure i can't have him in danger of being one of my favorites <laughs> so i'm gonna say i'm gonna say that wow. it is slightly distracting having the pistol and the holster dulled, dulled up in red i mean they had black paint in the palette yeah i know yeah, and been... there's the cool details on his left leg there as well those kind of things what? I have no idea. <laughs> but uh, a handsome figure and definitely a, a very solid 7 from Steve-O. Yeah, I, I would probably give him a, a 7 as well. Because, I mean, it's it's a classic blue, but maybe it's just the, this this version of him, but like the blue is a bit inconsistent. I mean, it's not the same blue across the entire figure. Rob, once again, it's just Sunday. Oh, it's just time. It's, oh, it's you, time again. Okay. Are you going to knock him for looking a bit greenish, like the Range Viper? <laughs> Range Viper's fine, he's okay, but I, I really like this guy. Um, he feels like a proper Cobra Trooper and he fits in with everyone else. And he's a seven from he's both a seven. of us. Nice. It's a full on seven. Uh, now, this is definitely the vehicle to beat, everybody. I think you probably could guess it's coming. Dun, dun, dun. Oh. oh, yes. Look at that. Yes, yes. This, I think, when you think of Cobra Blue, this is the blue that I think people think of. The most mm. at least for me this is when i think of cobra blue this is the blue that is cobra blue and it's wonderful that it's featured on this incredible vehicle i need to stop playing with it and rate it uh to give this anything less than a perfect score is just madness this is this is, this is the best the best <laughs> 10 out of 10 and absolutely no hesitation from me there it's perfect. It's toy perfection. It's scale, albeit diminutive when compared to other jets in the line, makes it perfect because it's the perfect toy to play with. You can hold it. It's the right size. You can hold it one-handed. You've got two characters in there. I've even come around in terms of my opinion on the included gun because guess what? In the kind of dogfights that G.I. Joe, fantasy dogfights that G.I. Joe is involved in and Cobra are involved in, this gun has had its uses. It certainly has in webisodes that we've shot. 
where if you get into a turning fight with an enemy aircraft, the ability to shoot into the circle is invaluable, even if it's, you know, a piddly little, I don't know, one of those, nine mils. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, it, if this was the cartoon, they would be lasers. So, exactly. I mean, that makes them even more deadly. Size matters not. I can't, yeah, I can't fault this at all. I mean, I've owned this for many years as the G.I. Joe version. So G.I. Yeah, Joe book hack. <laughs> <laughs> I use a plastic straw. Yeah, I think that's the only problem with this thing, is that the... Uh, you cannot land this thing comfortably without hacking it. Yep, well, it's a, it's a serviceable hack. I mean, if you don't want to break it, just uh, sand those points down and make it frictionless. And it's, yeah. It's gorgeous. I, yeah, I, I, I also have to give it a 10 out of 10 because as I said, to me, this is Cobra Blue. And this is the bluest of the blue the and it represents- was very seldom repeated. In yeah. Mind. Damage panels. Take it or leave it. I mean, you could always just leave it and imagine the damage, but if you were the kind of kid who insisted on returning to base, you know, battle augured in, you can yeah. do that. So, yeah, I also give this a 10 because in my mind, that is Cobra Blue. Ah, we're into the big boys now. The biggest of the big. Ooh. What is this? <laughs> So his direct competition is, uh, you know, He-Man over here. <laughs> and I'd say in the face sculpts department, it goes to the 90s. But Absolutely. in every other department, it is 84 all the way. Battle hood, not battle hood, <laughs> hooded Cobra <laughs> Commander. The very namesake of our dear friend, Hooded Cobra Commander 788's channel. It's, uh, it's hard to knock this figure. He's kind of the figure that you have to have, whether you like Cobra or not. It's like, you gotta have someone barking the orders, and who better than this? He's in the regal Cobra Blue, the very regal stripe down the pants. Fantastic stripe, Ooh. yeah. I guess the question is, do you like him more than the Battle Helmet Cobra Commander? And that's gonna be very telling. We're gonna save him till last. But uh, as for ratings, what does this guy get? I, I definitely give him a solid nine. I think this, Along with the Rattler, I mean that is the proper Cobra Blue. And if Cobra Commander isn't his isn't in his actual blue, I think you know he's he's not going to get a very good score. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to give him an eight. He will always have slightly derpy eyes. Yeah. That's yeah, funny. but I mean that that kind but, of works towards you know his characterization in the cartoons. From the neck <laughs> down, from the neck down, he is perhaps the perfect Cobra figure. It's not too buff. He looks battle dress. And yeah, that gun. What a classic trademark. Eight from me. Oh, do you want to introduce our next two? I think they need to come side by side. Okay, so yeah, in, in, in doing this this entire thing, there's also stuff that I realized or at least find out about that I've never realized before. So we have the trooper and the officer from the original Cobra line. And something that I never realized until today was that they are completely unique. I mean, from a distance, you're like, oh, it's two blue guys. But you come up close and not a single reuse part. They are very much different from head to toe. I mean, you know, from the helmets, with the one not having a little kind of like indent on it and the other one having a little chevron, to the chest with the, with the different, um, you know, like harnesses on it. To the arms, they have different weapons. You know, he has stuff on his arms with a rock. Well, he has nothing. He's all pristine. And you know, down to the crotch, down to the legs. I mean, even the knife. You'd think, okay, let's reuse the knife mold. Nope, mm. it's different. The officer has got a more ornate knife. Yes. And uh, conspiracy theorists among us would uh, point out the triangle. Absolutely. On the pommel. Never, never dismiss triangle, guys. And then down to the knee pads. You know, the, the trooper has knee pads, the officer does not. And then the boots are different. It's It blows my mind. Um, the only thing that's the same, the butt. <laughs> it's literally the only thing that's the same. Otherwise, these guys are very much unique in their own things. That's Cobra's butt. <laughs> <laughs> Which do you prefer? Now wow. That's the true test. That is, I think I prefer to be in the battle lines with the with the trooper here. Mm -hmm. I, I just like that he looks a little bit more rough, but which is crazy. I mean, like, it's essentially the same uniform, but he looks more ready to be in the field. I mean, 
it's it's fantastic. Do you like the AK-47 of the officer? But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with you. I like the knee pads. Yeah, that's a detail that really makes the trooper stand out. And um, he's got a unique arsenal. The fact that he's got grenades and a grenade launcher really just give him an added dimension that, you know, only if you were looking at the sculpt details would you have picked that up. Yeah. Or the, the card art on the, 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 you know, the action figure packaging. But uh, it's nice that it's presented in the figure, picked out in paint. The red Cobra symbol is always a bit more of a winner than silver. Yeah, it like, stands out it more. It gives an extra color and red and blue only really work as far as I'm concerned in the Cobra uniform like they're 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 clashing colors in every other respect but here you've got like a sea of blue and a splash of red perfection it's incredible so it's gonna be a oh man <laughs> the, the the detractor will always be the very kind of potato-y heads yeah um that was a sign of the times you know you can't knock it these head sculpts were you know probably produced in 1980 or 1981 um, they certainly beat out everything that was around at the time from Star Wars for instance uh, but in terms of G.I. Joe where this stuff was quickly shown up by like 1984 um, you know it's tough to, to rank it too highly it's gonna be a seven for the Cobra Trooper and another seven for the Cobra <laughs> Officer no I do like the Trooper more I'm gonna give the Trooper an eight and the Officer a seven I think um, you really can't go much lower than that. I mean, these guys are very much representative. And it's nice that kind of like, these guys do fit in, I think, quite well with the Vipers later on. I mean, you know, the knee pads, they do... Even though these guys, yeah, look a bit more dated, I suppose, almost, they do fit in well with the Vipers. So there's a nice synergy with the troop building. Mm. Yeah, these guys are fantastic. Let's go, trooper! Yes, sir! <laughs> and finally, it all came down to this. The one that started it all. There he is. Battle Helmet Cobra Commander. Swivel arm version. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not that much of a, I suppose, uh, action figure hoarder or, or completionist <laughs> to go off to good old Mickey Mouse or straight arm version. But it's a tricky one. It is difficult because I think they hadn't established yet what they wanted to do with the bad guys, so they just kind of like. Blue and red looks cool together as an evil color scheme, but they hadn't quite yet got that cobra blue. To me, this is it's it's a paler blue. It's almost like he belongs with the hurricane. <laughs> he's built to stand out at this point. Yes, he's more like yeah, it is more cartoonish. The kind of um, true, absolutely the, the villainy of the bad guys. They kind of they're playing it down a little bit. It took it took at least a year or two before they were like okay. Bad guys can be, you know, more monotone, more serious. Though, way back when, uh, in the initial Marvel comic um, issue, issue number one, uh, Lady Do Operation Lady Doomsday, he goes from a hooded, deep blue uniform to just putting the battle helmet over that, and the, the blues remain the same. Mm. So, yeah, I guess you don't miss, I mean, they are selling you the same figure twice, Yes. So Hasbro had to create a color difference, but why didn't they start with the deep blue? Ah, oh, it's fantastic. I mean, even in yeah, it's the same episode we watched last night, he literally just puts the helmet on over the hood. Or at least, you know, and it's, it's that same dark blue in the cartoon. It's just unfortunate, yeah, that they couldn't give it the same blue, but still, the detailing on this figure is, is still fantastic. Smart way of sidestepping having your commander figure with a backpack, because yeah. that would not look very commanderly like um, and yet they built it into the sculpt so he still retains a play feature yeah, no, this is a genius um, figure they got it right from the start, it's just, for me at least, they didn't get the blue right yet mm -hmm. so do you rate him under the, the hood? I definitely would um, I've, always en I've always enjoyed the hooded version more um, so I'm, I'm probably going to give him an 8 mm. yeah I think I'm right there with you, buddy. Eights all round. Excellent figure, but he has been surpassed. Unfortunately, you know, he is as far as we get in terms of the classic G.I. Joe run and having the battle helmet. Yeah. Mm, which is a pity. It is an oversight. But maybe, maybe you can't talk perfection. You really can't. I don't think so. They got it right so early on, it's like, 
What are we gonna do now? Hail hey, Cobra! Ah! And there you have it, G.I. Joeberg's favorite Cobra figures and vehicles dressed up in that very handsome Cobra Blue mm. for Cobra Convergence 4. Yes! But in case you weren't keeping score, here are our top favorites. Absolutely. The runners up in the vehicle department. Runner up. Runner up. Cobra Night Landing. Oh, Had to be. Oh, it's so nice. <sighs> but it wasn't nice enough. To beat out. Oh. Oh, yes. The only thing that got a perfect score from both Steve and me. Yeah, you can't fault it, can you? I think. No, you, you, you really can't. We've, we've waxed lyrical about this. <sighs> and, um. Yeah, if you want to hear more lyrical waxing, yeah, check out some of the reviews out there. <laughs> Runner-ups in the figure department, uh, it should come as no surprise. Hooded Cobra Commander. Absolutely. HTC, shout and out. It should come as a surprise. <laughs> Range Viper. Yeah, strangely enough, but I think definitely childhood memories and um, just the look is so unique. Mm. Red, <laughs> red, red eyes. Mm. <laughs> Scary. Which leaves us our favorite, or at least our top ranked, Cobra figure that sports blue. It's the Viper. Yep, as we've said all along throughout this entire you know, review process. <laughs> the red and the blue looks so good on a Cobra figure, and it looks no better on any other figure than the Viper. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, we've just killed the viewers. Um, hey, it's time to well. kill, kill the recording. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I hope you've been watching all the videos from the contributors this month and continue to support them. The fate of G.I. Joe is in our hands. Yes. Uh, you can support G.I. Joe by getting these cool t-shirts. Look at them. Check out our Teespring store. Do it. Um, and keep watching uh, the videos as they come out this month and support them onwards into their endeavors. And I believe it's multimedia, so... Podcasts are also in on the action. Uh, Expand your horizons. Just search iTunes for anything G.I. Joe, and hell, you might find something you really like. Like us. Yay, and other people. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I think uh, let's wrap it up with a hearty... Yo, Yo Joe! Bird. Cobra! Uh, but of course, I think we both know the figure that wore Cobra Blue the best. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. There he is. Shockwave. Numero uno, baby. 11 out of 10. <laughs> 1100 out of 10. <laughs> That's over 9,000. <laughs> I love you, 3,000. Hey. <coughs> Kill the viewers again. Hey. Sorry, gun violence. The rest of them that survived the first bout. All right, that's enough from us. <laughs> Later, guys. Cheers.